So I want to share something quickly in this video. It's an occurrence from this morning, from my life, that I think will serve to illustrate some key principles of neurolinguistic communication, the cybernetic aspects. By that, I'm talking about looking at communication through a live feedback loop uh, that occurs where you're adjusting in order to influence somebody towards the outcome that you're looking to create, okay? Now, I mentioned the idea, by the way, I think in the last video very briefly, about being an agent of change in the world. This is the thing that I love most about neurolinguistics, about uh, hypnotic communication, this kind of stuff. The stuff you can do out there in the world as and when you need to. So this morning I took my two daughters into school. They go to a small school, um, Montessori focused. They're both in their teens, okay, so they're in the teens hub there. And they had some vaccinations to get today, a tetanus booster and a meningitis vaccination, okay? Now, one of my daughters is 15, one is 17. My 15-year-old daughter, she can have a tendency to sort of have meltdowns about things. She's got a very vivid imagination and she can often create terrifying situations for herself, uh, freak herself out, this kind of thing. I thought there was a fair bet she'd freak herself out about these two um, vaccinations. So I sat in the car waiting and I'd said to my other daughter, text me if there's any issue. And of course I got the text through and it said, Aim is having a meltdown and she doesn't want to do it, okay? So I hopped out the car and I went to where she was having the shots done and she was there and she was crying and this kind of thing. Now, first thing here, this is about NLP communication. I wasn't going into this thinking, hmm, I'm going to use NLP, all right? I've been doing NLP stuff for years, uh, other stuff around influential communication. I've been doing my hypnosis stuff. So this is a, a retrospective analysis, okay? But I wouldn't have done any of the things that I did without my training in NLP and my NLP thinking and this kind of thing. Okay, so the first thing I go in and I have an outcome that I establish. Now I'm not doing this consciously. I'm not going, hmm, what would be the perfect outcome and going through the well-formed outcomes, but I get an outcome. So I know I want two things to happen. I want her to get the vaccines done, but I also want her to have a positive experience of getting the vaccines done that blows out the generalizations that are creating the panic trance that she's in. All right, she's in a panic trance. This has got a matrix that sits underneath of it, a matrix of ideas, of understandings, of sense making. It contains within it generalizations. I want to blow those out so that next time she has more flexibility and choice as she meets a moment like this in life. But this is all happening right now live. So I know two things. I want her to get the shots done and I want her to get a good reference experience that blows out the existing generalizations and blows out the existing trance. So, I go in there and I don't know what I'm gonna do, but first of all, I say, hey, you look like you're not having the best time, right? And she's like, oh. And I can see that she's like still going into her state. So I'm noticing her eye accessing and stuff like this. I'm monitoring how I'm getting her attention. So this is an important thing, important principle of NLP. We've, we've covered one, outcome focus. Second one here, calibration. Okay, and I ought to say here, the reason I'm running calibration is because I'm running what's called a tote loop. Test, operate, test, exit. This means, I'll put a link up to another video where I talk about this in a little bit more detail, but you know your outcome, you know where you are, you perform an operation, you test it, is it moving me closer to or further from, and then you adjust accordingly, okay? So I know with my initial gambits, which are based on shifting her state and getting her attention, they're not working. She's still getting lost in her trance. So I try a few different other options. They're not working either, okay? This is not a problem. One of the fundamental principles of NLP is if what you're doing isn't working, do something different, anything different. And one of the other key ideas of NLP is that you wanna develop what's called a requisite variety. You wanna have enough in your toolkit, enough options and choices that you're able to change up what you're doing until you start hitting on something that works. So I changed my strategy at this point, okay? And I, and I use something which is a bit of a bind, right? It's a bind, it's not strictly a double bind, but people often call it a double bind. So I said to her, 
Like, oh yeah, she'd said, oh, can't I just get it done next year? I said, you could, or you could look forward to next year knowing it's all in the past and you've already done it. So I started to use some bit of hypnotic language patterning around that and some time bending stuff. That started to get a little bit of somewhere. So calibrating feedback, nonverbal, she's paying attention, her eye accessing shifts, she's processing a little bit differently, but I'm not where I want to get to yet. So the next maneuver that I went for is I said, well, you know, two shots is quite a lot. Would you prefer to just have the two and get it over and done with, or would it be easier just to have one? Okay, so I've given her the choice between two or one shot. Why have I done this? Because I just wanna get her moving. I wanna get out of the stuck state and I wanna get her moving. If I can get her to buy into having one shot, we've got things moving. And I'm banking on the fact that when she's got one done, she'll get two done. Okay, because they're gonna go one, two, one straight after the other. So I said, so, you know, would you prefer to, to just get them both done and get them out of the way? Or would you rather just do one of them now? And she's going, well, I, I suppose I'd prefer to do one. I say, okay, so we just do one. That's fine, I said, that's absolutely fine. We can just do one. So she's like, okay, and she's, she's come up. Now, as she's come up, she sat down. I start rubbing her on this shoulder over here because I'm getting a kinesthetic distraction, right? And I start talking to her and giving her like a overload. Okay, they do the shot, they do the other shot. It's done, it's over. I'm like, hey, hey, did you even notice it? How quickly did that go, right? And I'm elevating my state, I'm smiling, I'm like light, and she's like smiling a bit back. She's not super happy, but she's in a much better place. She's breathing easy, she's free, she's moved through. So I'm using this as an example of being what I call an agent of change in the world, right? Being able to help somebody move their mind in the moment. I'm using NLP principles there. I'm using a lot of NLP stuff. I'm using various strategies and gambits. I'm running a tote loop. I've got an outcome. I'm deploying strategies and gambits, some of them from some of the linguistic models of NLP, some of them from outside of NLP. You know, but they're using some NLP, so I use that bind situation I created. But the idea of shrinking the change comes from outside of NLP. That's what I was doing, shrinking the change. So I've got that going on. I'm calibrating all the time. That means I'm using my sensory acuity to spot shifts, right? I'm monitoring things like eye accessing. People go, eye accessing is rubbish. Sometimes it's oversold, but it's not true that the emperor has no clothes. It's just the clothes are different from the ones that you are generally told the emperor is wearing, right? So I'm using that stuff, I'm using to get movement in the system. And finally, we get the outcome. I achieve my outcome. She gets the two shots done and she has a different experience from the one she's anticipating. And I did a little bit of after, um, after weaving of suggestion around, it's like, hey, you know, it's amazing when you find that you can do something you never knew you were able to do, right? Now, I dropped that and seed that idea because I'm taking that opportunity to put some new structures in that are geared towards her having more choice about how she meets such similar moments in the future. Okay, so I wanted to give that as a really simple example of how neurolinguistic principles, something, you know, NLP, a lot of people debunk it, say, oh, it's pseudoscience, go and read the Wikipedia page on it. It doesn't claim to be science, so um, I don't know why people call it pseudoscience. There's a lot of very pragmatic stuff there, a lot of value in it, well worth developing your skill with, uh, I'm still developing my skill. I'm not saying like I'm at the pinnacle of it. I've been in this stuff for years and I still learn things and I still refine things. Okay, if you've got some value from this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna learn more about NLP, you probably benefit from subscribing to the channel and making use of the comments section below to ask the questions that you would love to get answers to.